Here we have all of the notes that are used within the pipe band drumming notation and also bagpipe notation. You'll see that there are six different note shapes that are used. We'll now cover each note individually. First note we'll look at is the semi brave or the whole note. This note consists solely of just a hollow note head and looks like this when written on the drumming stave. You'll rarely ever see this note used in pipe band drumming. Next note is the minim or the half note. The half note consists of a hollow note head and one stem. And this is the minim written on the stave. You notice the line coming down from the hollow note head, that is what the stem is. Moving on, the next note is the crotchet or the quarter note. This consists of a black note head and a stem. And this is what it looks like written on the drumming stave. Very similar to the minimum, except we have filled in note head. And moving on, we've got the quaver, or the eighth note. This consists of a black note head, a stem, and one tail. Tail coming off the stem at the bottom. And this is what it looks like when written on its own on the pipe band stave. Lonely little quaver. The next note is the semi-quaver, or the sixteenth note. It's a black note head, a stem, and two tails. See the two tails coming off the bottom of the stem, and this is what it looks like in the music. Same as every other note placed on the single stave. And the last note we use in pipe band drumming is the demi semi quaver or the 32nd note. Black note head, a stem, and three tails. And here he is, big demi semi, sitting there on his tod with name mates on the pipe band drumming stave, wondering what's going on. And there we have it boys and girls, that's every single note shape that we use in pipe band drumming and bagpipe notation. And here I have a list of all of the note shapes that we've just spoke about and their equivalent rests beside them. A rest is a period of silence in music and you'll find that bagpipers will never use rests um, because their instrument contains or consists of constant sound, whereas drumming doesn't. Drumming's full of little gaps and spaces, so sometimes we need to use rests to create that period of silence. You'll see at the top that they've got the semi brave rest, which is like a wee top hat pulling down, but you'll also see the minimum very, very similar. The way I remember it is the semi brave is the bigger or the larger in duration, so it's heavier, so it pulls down off the stave and the minimum's lighter so it lifts up. The crotchet rest when you're drawing it on its own is very much like a two with an upside down two underneath it. The quaver I always remember it as a small seven or a small artsy seven you would say and the top of the seven being representing the single tail that's on the quaver on the semi quaver, you'll see that it's got two lines at the top of it, or two tails as you would say, same as the note. And the demi semi quaver has the three tails or the three lines, which is the exact same as the note. So each of the notes and each of the rests all have the exact same duration. So if, if you're playing a tune and you see a crotch at rest, you've got to wait, you've got to stop playing and rest for the length of that crotchet. Don't have enough time for a beer, alright, a crotchet isn't very long. Might be able to squeeze one in if it's a semi brief rest, but I doubt it very, very much. Okay, to summarise, there's six note shapes in general use in pipe band notation. First one's a semi brief which is just a hollow note head. Second was the minim, which is a hollow note head and a stem. Third was the crotchet, which is a black or filled in note head and a stem. Fourth was the quaver, which is a black note head, a stem and one tail. Fifth was the semi quaver, which is a black note head, a stem and two tails. And the final one was the demi semi quaver, which was a black note head, a stem and three tails. And that's it. We're done.